And I'm Brittany Yannick. Shh, and our please. topic was, does the gray wolf population need protection? The status of the gray wolf, the federal government is going to announce that it no longer needs the restriction to protect the gray wolf. Once nearly extinct, the population is abundant enough in some states to no longer need that protection that's provided from the government. The change would mean that wolves that pose a threat to human affairs can legally be chased or shot by the government agents. So, we're going to say our opinions. I personally feel like we should continue to protect the gray wolf. There's a lot of ecological reasons why the wolf's important to ecosystems. Uh, I agree with Gabby. I believe we should keep the protection for the wolves. They have more cons than pros. So after our presentation, we want to get your opinion and see whether you feel like we should continue to protect the gray wolf or not. Um, the largest members of the canine family are the gray wolves. They typically eat large hoofed animals such as deer, moose, elk, and caribou. Wolves also eat rabbits, beavers, and other small prey. Scavengers such as the gray wolf will eat already dead an animals and even carcasses. Uh, they will also leave behind the uneaten carcasses which benefit other scavengers. So some more fast facts. There is an estimated 7,000 to 11,200 wolves in Alaska, but there are fewer than 5,000 wolves in the lower 48 states. <coughs> wolves tend to travel and live and hunt in packs, and that's about four to seven wolves. And the packs will include a mother and a father, which is the alpha wolf, pups, and then other subordinate and young wolves. So right now we have a video that kind of gives a better explanation on the gray wolves. of the night, a full moon appears. A lone howl echoes across the darkness. This mystical creature has been revered and reviled in ancient cultures from Asia to the Americas. It is the wolf. And while it frequently plays the role of the villain, this hunter's playful personality does not agree with the stories of a solitary, sadistic murderer. But by working together in groups called packs, the wolf remains one of the world's most perfect predators. The gray wolf is known by many names. The timber wolf, arctic wolf, or tundra wolf, and is one of the most adaptable killers on the planet. Found everywhere from the snowy tundra to rocky mountains and green forests. Wolves are designed to go anywhere and kill anything. Depending on world location, a full-grown wolf can weigh anywhere from 44 to 137 pounds, with the largest ever recorded being 189 pounds in the snows of Russia. Nose to tail, wolves can be six feet long, and every inch of its body is used not only for survival, but for hunting. Once prey is found, or a territory won, the gray wolf celebrates with its trademark howl. Believed to howl for camaraderie, different pitches and sounds communicate many things. One howl tells other wolves to meet at a specified location, and another howl warns that you're entering into a new territory. A strong howl can be heard 10 miles away. targeted since the 1900s for their pelts. Hunting of the wolves really started to go into effect the population in the 1930s. 
and wolves have been poisoned, shot, and trapped all throughout American history, and the people that do this are known as poachers. By the 1970s, the wolves were found in only remote areas of Minnesota and Michigan. So some more background information. In 1973, the Endangered Species Act was passed by the United States Congress to protect the declining population. The gray wolf was nearing extinction with only about 400 wolves left in the lower 48 states. But by 1999, the population had swelled to about 3,500 individuals, and that was mostly in the Great Lakes and Rocky Mountain areas. Some individuals want the gray wolf status to stay as an endangered species. Most of its former habitat in the contiguous states are unsuitable due to human encroachment. Um, some argue that only after the wolves were placed into protection did the population begin to rise. There is concern that human persecution will again deplete the population of the wolf. <laughs> Loss of habitat will restrict the wolves even further into remote areas, and then that will reduce their habitat further unless federal protection continues. People want to continue to protect the gray wolf for many reasons. Uh, it's very vital to maintaining the natural balance in the environment. And the call out sick and weak animals, such as deer and elk, to keep them at a healthy population. To call means to um, get rid of a individual that's in the pack that is sick or injured. And it actually makes the herd itself healthier because they would rather go for the weak than the strong. So that had a rippling effect that has been the result of the reintroduction of the gray wolf. And examples of that would be the reappearance of aspen and willow trees and the return of beavers, as well as an increased rate in fox. And that's due to the fact that the gray wolves prey on animals that prey on the, gray, the fox and the beavers. So, and consequently, it would increase their population. There are many ecological reasons why the gray wolves are vital to the environment. Um, in a study that was performed in 2001, it was found that in the Yellowstone area, the moose population ballooned to more than five times their size. And also, they destroyed woody areas where the birds were nested. So as a result of that, several bird populations were eliminated. So scavengers thrive when wolves are around, and this is basically because they'll eat the wolves' leftovers and animals include the ravens, magpies, and there's over 445 different species of beetles that will feed on carcasses after the wolves have it built. Wolves are extremely good for the environment. Um, Wolf-killed carcasses are enriched with soil, and they enhance the levels of nitrogen and other nutrients for other living. And wolf kills also feed more animals than hunting by humans since wolves scatter their carry-on over the landscape, which is the leftover of the carcasses. So there's a lot of organizations that work to protect the gray wolf, and they have basically general goals that they all have in common, and that includes to dispel myths and rumors about the gray wolf. They want to defend the Endangered Species Act, and they want to protect the wolf population, especially in the low Yellowstone regions of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. There was a study done in the Yellowstone area, and the coyotes preyed the longhorn to almost extinction. And in this study, since the wolf population had increased, the longhorn population actually rose. So the longhorns tend to give birth near the wolf dens because coyotes steer clear of those areas. Um, deer and elk tend to congregate in smaller areas when the gray wolf is around, and this lessens the spread of disease, such as chronic wasting disease, and that's a neurological disease that leaves lesions in the brain of the infected animal, and that's an elk that has the chronic disease, and they get really sickly and thin. Uh, the Yellowstone elk are less likely to overgaze near the river and streams, which damage the fragile ecosystems when the wolves are around. Um, we weren't able to find a picture of an actual damaged ecosystem from the elk, but it, as you can see, if there's that many elk in one area for too long, it's going to damage the ecosystem. So a 2005 Berkeley study that was done in the Yellowstone area found that wolves actually help 
against climate change. And the climate change they're talking about is now the winters, and that has affected the elk because there are fewer elk deaths due to like less climate change. Um, wolf tourism is an economic boom. Uh, the restoration of wolves in the Yellowstone area costs about $30 million, but has brought it in about like $35.5 million in an annual net benefit to the area surrounding Yellowstone Park. So the other side of the issue are people who don't feel that the gray wolves need protection. So there are many opponents that counter the state, such as Minnesota. They argue that the population of the gray wolf is growing to about 4 to 5% per year. And since the population is growing at a healthy rate, they don't need federal protection anymore. Um, the ranchers are concerned at the current growth rate that wolves will encroach on their livestock, which I don't, in my personal opinion, I don't think this is fair considering humans encroached on their living like where they live their environment before wolves encroached on where we live. And landowners feel that they should have the right to protect themselves from potential losses. Um, this is a picture of cattle that has been attacked by a wolf and the farmer lost it. From a financial standpoint, protecting the wolves costs the United States over $200,000 a year. And if wolves were legally hunted and trapped, money could be saved to protect other endangered species. And the species mostly include like the bald eagle and other birds that do less damage to the ecosystem and then less damage to other animals. Many farmers don't believe that the gray wolf needs protection. That's of course to them losing the livestock. And many farmers have complained of the fear of leaving their cattle for the night because of the wolves. Um, they often refer to them as killing machines. Um, cattle are the most common prey for wolves that live within a residential farming area, but that is due to the part that we're encroaching on their land. Sheep, cows, chicken, and deer are among the animals most targeted by the gray wolf. And there have been like a few instances where there have been attacks on household animals, and that includes dogs and cats. There have been many confirmed gray wolf attacks on cattle. Um, in August 2012, there was an attack left that left three injured calves, as well as two dead near the Canadian border. And a few days later, a female uh, non-breeding wolf was killed in an attempt to break up the pattern of the attack of the livestock. So there have been reported cases of gray wolves attacking humans. So in June 2012, a woman who actually worked within an enclosure of the gray wolf was attacked and killed by what were assumed to be tame wolves. But that's kind of flawed because wolves by nature aren't going to be tame. They have like natural wild instincts. Um, in March 2010, a woman who was a teacher and avid jogger was found dead on a road in Alaska. Her autopsy showed that she was repeatedly mauled by an animal and that was later determined to be the gray wolf. And it's a fact that wolves will go after women and children more likely than men that are seen as even more like an alpha male to them, so they're easier to prey. In 2010, the state of Michigan paid out $54,241.15 to the farmers in the peninsula for the livestock use or loss due to the wolf attacks. And uh, the farmers are actually reimbursed depending on the animal. Uh, for example, a goat may be worth anywhere from like 200 to 400 dollars, and whenever this happens, there is a 4,000 dollar cap, even though the damage may actually exceed that amount. Many states feel that for the protection of wolves should be state-based, so they should like take a vote on like whether they feel like it needs to be protected or not. Although residents in a Wisconsin area showed that they didn't necessarily want to like completely kill off the population, but they were in favor for hunting and lethal control, and they just wanted to improve the coexistence between wolves and humans. So at this point, we just want to like get your opinion of whether you guys think wolves should be protected or not. So if anyone wants to volunteer, or um, we could do it. Who is for the protection of wolves? Raise your hand. That's everyone. Right. <laughs> Which is like the conclusion that we came to that there's more benefits to protecting the gray wolf than non benefits. And then we have our references. We
we also have some extra facts. Um, the scientific name for the gray wolf is Canis lupus, and it's the second largest canine, as we said, but, um, or it's the first largest canine, as we said, but the second largest is the coyote, which the gray wolf actually preys on the coyote. And um, the gray wolf is actually two to three times the size of a coyote. And then there's just like a lot of different organizations, especially in the Rocky Mountain area and the Great Lakes that like they're used, they're, they have, they want to protect the gray wolf and we gave you their goals for that. So the majority of like the population want to protect the gray wolves. Do you have any questions? It's not really a question, it's more of a, get your opinion on something. Um, do you believe that media propaganda helps people choose a side on this? Like, is it just a coincidence that this is a big topic recently and that the movie The Grey just came out? Do you think that has some influence on people's decision to be for or against the issue? Yeah, I think the media, like, they're gonna, it's gonna be biased. Like, some people are gonna sway it that they're, like, horrible, and other people are gonna be, like, for protecting it. So I think, like, movie portrayal, that stuff's, like, not always realistic, because, like, the attacks on humans usually happen when we're, like, in their area, and, like, we're bothering them. They don't typically come and, like, bother, like, people. Not only that, they do that for every animal. Like, sharks, they have a scary shark movie. Or bears, they have a scary bear movie. They do that for every... Thing. So I mean, it's there's pros and cons to everything, but the gray wolves they need to be protected, in my opinion. So they're not really gray wolves around here. So they're, not the Rocky they're like more up in like the Rocky Mountains and then the Great Lake areas. Like mostly around here, we're gonna find like coyotes, but you're not really gonna find like any gray wolves. Yeah, they're mostly like Washington, Montana, Idaho. Thank, Thank you for your time.